Do you remember the moment you realized the magic of reading? What was the book that opened the gates? For the symbol of the tenth book I'm presenting here on this channel, I chose to speak about the one novel that made me fall in love with books. I was a child who did not love fairy tales or children's books. So every time I heard my parents rave about a new read, I was baffled, for it seemed to me a complete waste of time. Then, when I was about 13 and desperately wanted to be a grown-up, my mother found a brilliant ruse. She said, here's a novel that you received as a present when you were a baby. It's not for children, but I think you're old enough to understand it without getting confused. Try it for at least 50 pages before you say you don't like it. At least that's how adults do it. I opened the book and on the first page a handwritten note said For when you'll be older. Love, Uncle Gil, 1989. And that's how it all began. With Mircea Eliade and his diary of a short-sighted adolescent. Romanul Adolescentul in Europe. The daily life and emotional turmoil of a 17-year-old boy, fascinated by literature and struggling with science, who starts to question the meaning of life in an attempt to better understand who he is. An autobiographic novel, written at the age of 18 and published in 1989, three years after Eliade's death. Today, as I reread it, it makes me feel a bit nostalgic of the time I discovered it, of the moments I felt like he did. But when I first read it, I remember feeling understood, identifying with all the questions and dilemmas he was expressing, but also aspiring to be like him, to feed a curiosity that was awakening in me. Number one, how to become an intellectual. A word very often misunderstood or even turned into mockery. The intellectual was, and still is today, the pillar of progress. The person that by understanding the past and its effects in the present can shape a better tomorrow. And how do you become an intellectual? by reading. A young Mircea Eliade, trying to stay afloat in a multitude of subjects imposed in high school, was torturing his already short-sighted eyes with Honoré de Balzac and Giovanni Papini, studies of anthropology and philosophy, not to mention the study of foreign languages, French, English and Italian, but also Hebrew, Persian, and later on Sanskrit. A thirst for knowledge, fascinating to read in a diary of a 17-year-old boy.
Number two, the elegance of a generation. It's not about misplaced nostalgia, but every Romanian knows that the short period of time between the two world wars was the height of Romanian society. It shows in the subjects that young Eliade and his classmates discussed, in their conversational skills, it even shows in their fashion sense. A small detail that makes the scene so charming. For instance, this evening, Robert and Dino came over to my house and decided we should go for a walk in the Chishmijiu Gardens. Robert was wearing white trousers and shoes with bows. Dino's jacket was unbuttoned. He had an antelope skin belt and a silver cigarette case. Neither were wearing a cap or hat. I buttoned my tunic and we went out in the street. Robert sighed. Dino offered me a cigarette. Robert sighs because he's a genius. He told me one night that geniuses are unhappy. Why? From the heights of his greater knowledge, Robert gave me a kind pat on the shoulder. You simply wouldn't understand. Number three, bringing back the art of journaling. You probably kept a diary when you were a child, and when you read it years later, you found it ridiculous. At least that's what I thought, and if I'd have to guess, I'd say that Eliade had the same feeling. Maybe that's why he never published his first novel while he was alive. But think of what it means for us today. For a young adult that could find solace in someone else's heartbreaks or questioning, and maybe feel encouraged to put his own thoughts into writing. Just imagine how therapeutical it could be in the age of bullying and of digital personas. So let's make it trendy again to buy a beautiful notebook and write down our life. At the end of the day, it might be more interesting than we thought. A troubling balance of the two, I would say. For if there is a very lively energy of a teenager ready to conquer the world by day, there is also an introverted and pensive soul searching to fully comprehend every single thought or feeling that comes along. As it should be, I suppose. The young energy of the child that discovers the world meets the yin composure of the adult-to-be. Fascinating. Ar trebui ca la toamnă să încep să studiez atent psihologia. Poate, dacă m-aș cunoaște, lucrurile s-ar petrece altfel. E foarte greu să mă cunosc pe mine însu. Nu mă pot analiza serios pentru că îmi trec alte gânduri prin minte tocmai când am nevoie de mai multă pătrundere. Apoi nu știu de unde să încep. E foarte ușor să spui cunoaște-te pe tine însuți. Dar aș vrea să-l știu pe acela care a priceput ceva când a încercat să se cunoască pe sine. Eu nu pricep nimic. Nu pot distinge ceea ce e firesc în sufletul meu 
de ceea ce nu există decât prin imaginație. Nu mă recunosc în multe gânduri și nu pricep rostul multor sentimente. Nu pricep de ce sunt câteodată trist și de ce altă dată îmi place să umplu cu fleacuri glumețe și superficiale ca etul acesta, care ar trebui să fie înțesat numai cu analize, făcute pe îndelete și cu toată seriozitatea. Poate am să pricep la toamnă, când voi studia psihologia. This autumn, I'll have to study psychology in earnest. If only I knew more about myself, then maybe things would be different. Yet it's so difficult to understand who I am, and I'm unable to analyze myself properly, because at the very moment when I need to look more deeply within me, my mind is suddenly filled with other things. Plus, I don't know where to begin. It's easy to say, above all, know yourself. But I'd like to meet someone who has managed to discover anything while trying to do this. I can't work it out. I can't distinguish between what exists naturally in my soul and what only exists in my imagination. I don't recognize myself in most of my thoughts and can't fathom out the meaning of many of my emotions. I can't understand why sometimes I'm sad and at other times I enjoy filling this notebook with commonplace humor and trivia when it should actually be overflowing with serious, in-depth analysis. But perhaps I find it easier to understand in the autumn when I start studying psychology. Ask the questions, keep searching for the answers, and never stop reading. Now that I put it out there, I think I'll go back to those children's books. Maybe I wasn't supposed to read them as a child. Maybe my life lesson from the diary of a short-sighted adolescent is simply to read anything and everything. Then, at one point, the dots will connect themselves. To remember what it was like to have the time to ask yourself all these questions. To remember how you saw life at 17. To remember the excitement of finding the answers. Why you should read it. To remember. For my Romanian followers, I hope this has been a joyful reminder of your own experience of the book. For the international reader that maybe knows Eliade for his history of religions, I hope you take this as an invitation to discover a more intimate and playful side of a very serious gentleman. I invite you to join the ritual In our next episode, it will make you travel in time. Until then, enjoy your reading.